Ladies and gentlemen, join us from all the way in North Carolina. Chris Cole is with us. Chris Cole was a huge inspiration to me over the course of the presidential campaign with Victims of Family Law for Kokesh. And I think it is amazing to see the birth of an activist. I, I, I'd like to take some credit with our campaign for Chris Cole now being on fucking fire all the fucking time for justice, for freedom. And Victims of Family Law is uh, still, as I described it in uh, the campaign, a black swan waiting to happen. And in that, I mean, the majority of Americans are victims of family law one way or another. And what I mean by that, and, and, and Chris can get into this a lot more, but anybody who's been through a, first of all, the, the real obvious one, not by no means the worst, but the obvious one is, if you've been through a bad divorce, anybody who's been through a bad divorce can go, holy shit, that was unnecessary. Yeah. We gave lawyers and government a lot of money and that was and, and when we fought and we weaponized the state against each other and we didn't Man. need to do that at all it was it was all unnecessary wasteful headache pain more suffering that you can look at and go because of government right because of the legal system this is why i mean that you're a victim just if you have been through a bad government of force if government has in any way made a divorce more unpleasant or costly than it needed to be, you're a victim of family law. If you are a child of divorce, like myself, you're a victim of family law. But I would go so many steps further, Chris, I think in being inclusive about how many people are affected by this, how many people grow up in one parent households where there was no divorce, but because of certain legal pressures and economic manipulation and incentives. So Chris, yeah, you're on fire. I am I have I how many times have I triggered you in the last 30 seconds? Uh, uh. so so I, I know, you know, I want to give you a chance to, to introduce yourself and talk about why this is important, but also to give people an overview of this issue and a sense of what you are doing uh with, with this campaign season and ongoing to uh, to keep the torch alive for this cause. So wherever uh, you want to start, man. Yeah. So, so first thing, thank you for always encouraging this and giving me this platform um, and sort of uh, helping me spearhead this. Um, we've um, introduced Victims of Family Law, which originated with the Kokesh campaign um, and taken that uh, into the Jorgensen campaign and the Libertarian Party. And we're, we're hoping to make this a featured um, subject matter for the Libertarian Party to take a hold of, thanks to Adam. Um, so I, I do want to say thank you um, for giving, giving me this opportunity for this platform and being able to speak right now. Um, you know, I wanted to segue sort of in everything that we're going through currently um, that you're seeing um, with the, the riots and the pandemic and and the government. Um, basically, it, it's it's psychological warfare. It's the destruction of mental health. Um, the reason people are hurting, the reason people are fighting, the reason people are angry is the system itself is meant for government benefit. Um, and then it tricks you to believe that it's in your best interest so that it sort of subdues you to do as you're told. And then it uses fear like I'll take away your kids. I'll take away your license. I'll put you in jail if you don't pay your child support. Um, and like you have said uh, multiple times, it's, there's a shame game in it. There's a psychological shaming that even I had to. I still battle with it, but I'm conscious of it. So I'm able to fight it back. Yeah, one thing I missed there, you pointed out, I'm so grateful for, is people who have had their children taken from them by government aid. And, right. and you put it like that, and you go, that happens in a, yeah, it's called CPS. Because right. your neighbor saw you smoking a joint in your backyard, and they, 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 they're just that kind of caring, and they want <clears throat> the government agents, and they're going to report you to CPS, DCF, whatever the, the, the alphabet soup agency at your state level is, 
But the other thing, Chris, that you that you mentioned there that, that I failed to was the, the, the bigger psychological impact. And right. this, this, you know, can be seen in some of the issues that we discussed with Dr. Farrell uh, a, a couple of months ago, uh, the author of The Boy Crisis. And that, that's almost become like cliche at this point. Like, yeah, boys who grow up with single moms don't grow up with the benefits of having a father around. Duh. Uh, but, yeah. but also like how this is poisoning relationships, you know, how it, it, it leads women to, to be unable to find satisfaction in a relationship when they bring the state into it because there's, they don't know any other way. So I, I don't know, for, for people who maybe really haven't considered this, can you put your finger on if all of these hugely horrific impacts that we see all connected to family law policy, what, are the, what do you think is the biggest cause? Well, uh, you know, what they're doing is, you know, we're, we're seeing a race war uh, with what's going on still. We're seeing a gender war being being just fueled and fueled. And instead of us realizing that government is perpetuating the feuds amongst ourselves, um, you know, e we're even fighting within the equal shared parenting movement, a feminist movement or a um, domestic violence movement. And we're not advocating for any of that. What we're advocating is for the best interests of our children. But the government has sort of propagandized, um, you know, domestic violence being mainly between men when we actually know facts and figures that d domestic violence is an equal, um, you know, close to 50 50 ratio, but men are ashamed to speak out. Um, you know, there are plenty of mothers that I work with that um, that advocate for father's rights, children's rights that that see this sickness because they haven't been necessarily they didn't grow up that way or whatever. So so it's it's very obvious that that there is a psychological um, conditioning that's 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 causing what we're seeing with the pandemic that's causing the relate the race relations and that's causing this gender war to distract us from who's really stealing from us who's really taking our kids and and you know threats being made that you you know even me being on this show with you my ex's attorney could use this and say he's with adam kokesh adam kokesh loads a shotgun and was arrested and so we're bad people but what we're actually doing is we're having real discussion about things that people are afraid to talk about. All right, CJ. I'm sorry. Um, well, Chris, and, um, hey, as Chris, scary as this is. So, 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 hey, I think it's a great time. If you could, did you have anything that you wanted to share? Yeah, uh, there's about a, your a clip. Background? Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll get on screen. So, CJ, if you could, if you could get us onto the side and and pull up the material from Chris and Chris, you know, however you want to present this, but take the opportunity for letting everybody know, you know, how did you get connected with this? And, you know, what, what, I mean, I, I, you've told your story, you know, a number of times and I, I don't want to be like, well, tell this again, but you know, how did you connect with this? What, what do you want people to know about your story? So the biggest thing, and I know, you know, we're, we're short on time. So, you know, I have a clip uh, from our interview with uh, Dr. Farrell, which was just one clip that was about ADHD. And you were asking about um, different types of medicines. You know, this is just one instance um, in this three minute clip of our interview where we show the psychological effects of government on on children that children that grow up to be parents that repeat this cycle so if you want me to just show this brief clip uh we'll go to that clip where the boys who don't have dads who, what i call dad deprived boys yeah. those are the ones that are suffering in more than 50 developmental areas the girls by the way are also suffering but not as intensely as the boys are. The boy, the girls, as I mentioned before, they're not nearly as likely to commit suicide. The girls don't do the school shootings. Uh, the boys do the school shootings. The, bo the girls don't join ISIS at the same rate. The boys don't commit crimes that lead to prison. 93% of our prisoners are males, but almost uh, 80 to 90% of those males are uh, dad deprived males. Our school yep. shooters, the 10, uh, the, uh, the, the, the most the, the school shooters that have killed ten or more people in the 21st century 
all 100% of them are dad deprived boys. Yep. And so, um, so my question that comes from all this is, you know, as a libertarian candidate, how would you go about uh, addressing the boy crisis that I've just identified? You know, this is such an intersectional issue. There's so many different things that, that we can see in libertarian policy that's going to help with this issue. The divergence that you pointed out from ages nine onward for male versus female suicides, how much of that is traceable to ADHD and other SSRI medications? Those are the spoke um, so that uh, so fathers, for example, are far more likely to enforce boundaries. Moms are like more likely to set boundaries. So a mom will, and therefore from the enforced boundaries, develops postponed gratification. From the postponed from the postponed gratification, there's less ADHD. So when we look at two groups of people, children raised predominantly by dads, only 15% of them have ADHD. When we look at children raised predominantly by moms, 30% have ADHD. And I can give maybe one really good example of that. Moms and dads will enforce boundaries the same, I mean, set boundaries pretty much the same way. They'll both say something like, um, sweetie, you can't have your ice cream until you finish your peas. And then with mom, uh, the children will go, oh, you know, I've had such a tough, tough day today. Um, I'm really sad. I'm a little bit depressed. Um, you know, can I just have my ice cream today? And mom's empathy will be, and her oxytocin will be stimulated. I, I always knew to go to mom. I love my dad. I always went to mom. As, for sometimes these roles are reversed, but as a rule, uh, mom will be more likely to say, I'll tell you what, sweetie. Uh, I said you can't have your ice cream until you finish your peas, but have this many more peas, um, and then you can have your ice cream. So the child learns from mom, he can manipulate a better deal. Dad is more likely to say, um, I'm sorry, but you, the deal is that you, can't, you finish your piece. And, um, and then the boy will go, you're so mean, your mom's not like that. Well, you can <laughs> the wine and complain, and then there'll be no, more ice cream, no ice cream tomorrow night either. Oh, darn it. Uh, with that, I've got to focus on finishing doing what I need to do. And so okay. focusing on finishing uh, what you need to do develops attention focus as opposed to attention deficit. deficit. Hey, so Chris. Tell us a little bit about your personal backstory and how you first connected with this as a bigger issue. So with my story, um, I had a relationship, uh, unmarried as, as most people are, at least half of us are these days and had two children. And, um, when it was time to end the relationship, the, the system sort of gives grounds for a dispute because it's not there for anything other than a dispute. It wants to make money. So, um, you know, lies were told, things were drug out, continuances were done, multiple lawyers were hired um, and, you know, went bankrupt, um, spent tens of thousands of dollars um, still in litigation. Um, it gives lawyers and judges the ability to manipulate, to uh, extort money at, at a rate that you can't uh, pay and then child support. If you are a title four D, uh, which is part of the social security act, which means if you're receiving any sort of welfare benefits, you are now classified as a title four D case. That means that they encourage, um, child support collection over equal shared parenting because the federal government who most people don't think is involved in these cases that it's just on a state level um, incentivizes the states to say, hey, the more money you collect in child support, the more money we will match uh, for your government programs. So that encourages agencies which are private, like child support, to say, hey, we just want to collect, 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 because then they're going to give us more money uh, rather than encouraging equal shared parenting. And that's so something that knows so supporting a, a presidential campaign and i know that uh, you know joe jorgensen is the lp nominee the libertarian candidate for president right now is totally on board with this you know and it you know i don't know if she has the same you know desire to put it up front that we did with our campaign but right. obviously she's going to be able to to provide you the opportunity that we did at least to be able to keep getting this message out in the conversation around presidential politics. But if she doesn't win this year, what's the pressure point? What's the next place that you want to see people who care about this issue 
make their voices heard to bring about real policy change? Well, I think the biggest thing, um, like you always discuss, is that is is fear mongering and people are afraid. Um, but nothing scares me more than having my kids taken from me. Um, I think people have accepted this as reality like this you can't fight a judge you can't fight a cop you can't you know you basically have to do as the system tells you to do um wait I a second are you that. saying that now we need to start lighting family court buildings in the offices of family court judges <laughs> on fire i'm okay with that <laughs> yeah you know i i'm i'm with you it's 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 like you said people are uh, angry and the reason they're angry anger is a secondary emotion to pain uh it's a, it's a, it's it's not it's not really what is what's what's there's anger but it, there's some sort of turmoil there's there's pain and and the government's t not taking their um you know, their chunk of the pie due to that pain that they're, they're, they're the cause of it. They don't care. Um, they don't care about the well-being of my kids, because I guarantee you when those two little boys that they're talking about their best interests today uh, in order to extort me, when they become fathers, they're going to be right where I am. If they have kids with the wrong woman, they're going to to use them as the best interest of them today. And when they become grown men, they will do the same thing to them. They just recycle that, you know, they use children. And then when they become men, they're going to do it to them. All right, Chris. Well, Hey, what can people do to get more involved and to find you, get in touch with you? So you can, you can find me on any of my pages type Chris Cole official is a music page that I also run, but um, we set up victims of family law for Joe Jorgensen. Um, we have a interview with Spike Cohen and Joe coming up with victims of family law and definitely want to thank Adam. Adam, you got this whole thing started. Thank you for having me on the show today. Adam, Adam got this ball rolling. I'm just running with it. So I appreciate the opportunity. And thank you, CJ, for uh, working with me earlier to get this thing going today. Thanks so much for joining us, Chris.